Thank you, Jim.
Wow, I'm really the only one in here now? <laughs> That's it. What can I tell you? Go to sleep for 15 minutes, Hunter. I really want to. To be honest, I'm, I'm super tired today. <laughs> and I've, been, I've had a headache all day, so I know what you're feeling. Yeah. I had to go out and get some coffee. That's fine with me. I've got an I've got a email I've got to an answer, so I'll be back in a moment. All right. Hi, Victoria. Victoria? Hi, Victoria. Hi, Professor. Hi. Uh, anything you have? Me? No. Yeah. Okay, just sit around for another 10 minutes or so. I'm answering uh, a question from Rosina on the uh, quiz, okay? I'll be you right back it. in. Sure. Be right back in in a second. Hi, Amethia. Hello. Do you have any questions, Armethia? No. Okay, I, what I'm doing right now is I'm answering an email from uh, uh, Rosina about the quiz. So I'll be there in a second, all right? Okay. Okay, I'm back. Hi, Kayon. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Peachy keen, wonderful. If I could get rid of this Great. headache, I would be wonderful. Ah. But Hunter keeps on coming back up here. <laughs> 
You should use some. Um... <laughs> Here, let me show you something. Dry, what is that? Uh, dry erase? What? The dry erase? No, use some of this. It's like this uh, menthol stuff, right? And it like makes it so that uh, it kind of like numbs the headache. It's really awesome. Huh. I do it by pounding my head on the wall. It feels so much better when I stop. <laughs> yeah, because you're asleep. <laughs> Faith, how are you doing, Faith? I'm good. Did I answer your question? You emailed me, I believe. Um, yeah, about the sig figs, I think. Okay, I'll trust you on that. You have to understand how many emails I get in a week. Mm. I mean, I didn't, I think that was like the only thing I emailed you on. And yeah, that helped. Just glad to know that the sig figs were okay before oh, I turned. Was this, was this about the, no, I'm sorry. This wasn't about the uh, uh, energy problem, right? With the temperature? No, that was not me. That was somebody else. Sorry. It's all good. You know, it's my greatest joy when I look and open up my course and I see no mail there. That just makes my whole day. Mm. And I'd actually rather be uh, talking with you guys in person. Right. Uh, anything happening, guys, out there? Anything interesting? Tiger Woods just was involved in an accident. I, I saw that. Uh, I question, that. sir. Yes, sir, Terry. Um, quiz nine. Apparently, I I just blanked that out from my mind. You got um, two drops. Uh, all right, <laughs> I you guess got, that's. <laughs> you, got, you got two drops, Terry. And basically, what happens is the minute that the quiz goes live, you guys see the answers. So it doesn't make any point for me to yeah. open it up to. Um. I had a question. Okay. Do you think will we be prepared to take quiz ten by the end of this class today? We will see. All right. I have okay. a question. Armethia. Yes, I was doing the quiz in that synthesis question. Um, I don't think we had that yet, and I was trying to find it in the book that I see anything. Okay, uh, Armethia, it's definitely in the powerpoints. Oh, I would definitely, I would definitely, if you're looking for something to look to study for the quizzes, I would definitely go to the PowerPoints rather than the book. Okay. okay. Uh, I got it. I don't know if he even talks about synthesis. It Hunter, are we, we outside now? Are we outside? Am I outside? Hunter got, Hunter got the shades on. Ah. So, like, okay, look at my eyes when I take them off. Yeah, that's tired. Put it back on, bro. Put it back on. Uh, two thirty-one to two thirty-two. I feel like a member member of the Squirtle Gang. The what? Squirtle Squad. Oh, yeah, God. whatever it is. I'm sorry. This is too young for my blood. I, I, I don't even. You know where my mind went when you said Squirtle was probably an entirely different place. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, Pokemon, you know. I don't know. Twenty-six. <laughs> Another again, again a place where my mind shouldn't have gone. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, Armethia. Armethia. Yes. Okay, I'm looking. Chapter seven. In the Tro book. Oh, but you're not using the Tro. You're using, you're using the survival guide. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Um, okay, let me. I'm fairly sure it's in there. Uh, okay. <sighs> I'm hungry. Okay. You got decomposition. He's got decomposition. You should have the other one. No, it just has decomposition. 
I read it back and forth. I couldn't find it. Okay. I have a, I have a question. Uh, just one second, Hunter. Armethia, again, yes. then I'll, 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 I will back up and go on with the uh, uh, try and look at the PowerPoints. Okay. Hunter, question you said. Does this involve squirtles or no, Pokemon? No. no, none of that. But let's, no, keep, I, let's keep it clean, please. Of course. Um, no, I was wondering, like, why does um, what's a, why do life forms re revolve around like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen? Like, why is it those? Why is it why is it those elements and not others? Because we haven't developed into a Vulcan society where copper is the basis of our blood rather than iron. What, what, what's a Vulcan? That's it's a, a Star Vulcan? Trek reference. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I got you, Star Professor. Trek. No worries. What? what? I got you, Professor. No <laughs> worries. <laughs> uh, Hunter, I don't know. I don't know why we're a carbon based. Uh, why the uh, uh, those Cheops, I think it's called Cheops, are the uh, um, main are the m m are the elements that are involved in human life form. I don't know why it's developed that way. I don't know if there's anybody that knows that yet. That would be pretty cool if they had like like something else. Like that'd be interesting. Well, other than the fact that carbon is uniquely uh, uh, is uniquely formed to be able to uh, to form covalent bonds. It's kind of like the perfect thing because it's right in the middle of the electronegative series. Yeah. Put the sunglasses back on, Andrew. All right. So tired, man. <laughs> I already. I went run. I went. I ran the causeway today. I'm just exhausted. You ran the causeway. The. According to Okay. Is that longer than the, than the Gandhi? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'll trust you on it. Anybody have any other questions? Or does anybody else want to add to the absurdity of Star Trek references and or Pokemon? Or Squirtles? I just know that Pokemon means pocket monster. Really? There you go. Yeah. That is one of the few things I know I put into my grandson's time capsule. Was like, he, he was born in 2000. I got a pack of uh, the Pokemon cards and I put it in there. That's the only thing I know. That's really? In there. I wonder where this uh, time capsule is. Uh, it's in Lighthouse Point right now. Because depending on what's in those uh cards th that could be pretty nice or if you keep it if you keep it pristine it could be nice Good who point. knows what that thing is worth i know in my in my granddaughter's there's like my little pony do you remember that anybody remember my little pony yeah 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 i think I terry collects i am worried terry terry <laughs> I think you're not a grandfather how do you know about My Little Pony? Yeah, my Little Look, Pony was I know like of also, it. Yeah, our, it was like our generation or my generation too. Yeah, My Little Pony. You was know, there's there. like statistics that say like a How good many portion males of know my, about little... my Little Pony, though. No, a good portion of My Little Pony viewers are like grown men. It's actually very. I'm strange. sorry. Again, Hunter, this, you're just like subject matter after subject matter <laughs> tonight. I think Terry's one of the uh, My Little Pony consumers. Not I, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my, that that was my, my little cousin, you know, when she was like four. It's uh, it's Gaith, actually. Today. Actually, my, just another very odd story. Uh, what was the cat? It was a little cat thing. It was around Hello. 2010. Hello, Kitty. My Little Kitty. My wife's former boss got her this little my little kitty and so what we did was we as we were traveling east 
we would like put it on different places and take a picture and send it back to her boss. <laughs> My little kitty. <laughs> It's uh, um, it's Hello Kitty. Oh, hello, yeah, hello, he hello Kitty was first appeared November first, nineteen seventy four. So Hello Kitty is, it's been around. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you know when I graduated? I don't want to take that, that guess because I don't want to get it wrong and then there be turmoil. So wasn't I'm it like seventy nine per your bio? <laughs> oh, actually, that was very kind of you. I graduated, I graduated in 75, 75. from high school. Okay. <laughs> I read yeah, it's still pretty young. I was born in the Eisenhower era, if you can believe that. That's pretty cool, guys. Are you older than the highway? Uh, actually, yes. We don't want to go there. All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Are we doing okay? There any questions about anything we've got that does not involve Pokemon, Squeaky Man, or what? What was that? Squir uh, Terry's My Little Pony. Squirters or whatever. Squirtle. Squ whatever. OK, anything out that does not involve Squirtle, Pokemon, <laughs> My Little Kitty? It wasn't My Little Kitty, is it? Anyway. My Kitty. <laughs> Anybody have anything to talk about they need to talk about? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have just a couple more to go. Couple more of these reactions to go. And the first one we are going to deal with is going to be combustion reactions. Combustion reactions, recognition. What in the world? No, I don't want that. I want this. Okay. We are looking at the reactants. One will be a hydrocarbon. Amazingly enough, a hydrocarbon is a compound with hydrogen and carbon. carbon. So we have a compound that has hydrogen and carbon in it. The second reactant will be oxygen. Combustion reactions always, always, always go if they're ignited. And you guys know this. How many of you have lit a propane grill? Do you have to yeah. re keep on relighting it? Or does it keep on going once it's lit? Keeps going. It's spontaneous after, after it first gets lit. But it does need to be lit. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Thank you. And I don't know what happened. I don't want that. Has everybody seen me yet? We're, we're yeah. on the combustion. Yeah, we see you. you see, yeah. Are you seeing the combustion yes. thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry I got into polls. All right. Now. Combustion reactions, you balance them differently than you do normal reactions. First thing you do with combustion reactions, balance the carbons, then balance the hydrogens. If the coefficient in front of water is even, all you have to do is balance the oxygens. If the coefficient in front of water is odd, you have to double it. Then rebalance the H's, rebalance the C's, and finally balance the O's. Okay, let me see if I can get to a. Okay, home, insert new slide. Okay, I have. Oh, the other thing about combustion reactions, the products are always water and carbon dioxide. So if I have this, I recognize the first one for being a hydrocarbon. Hold on a second. Oh. 
Susie Homemaker just broke out the vacuum and to terrorize the dog, I think. Okay, so I look at this. I see my first compound has carbon and hydrogen in it. My second compound has oxygen. I know immediately that my first product is gonna be carbon dioxide and my second product is gonna be uh, water. Okay, my rules say balance the carbons first. I have six carbons on the left. If I put a six in front of carbon dioxide, I've got six carbons on the right. I got 12 hydrogens on the left. Terry, what number goes in front of H2O then? 12. If I put 12 in front of H2O, this means I have 12 times two or 24 hydrogens. Do I need that many hydrogens on the right? Uh, you just need like six then, six, right? Six, six. Okay, so I balance my car carbons, I balance my hydrogens. I now look at the coefficient in front of water. It's even, I'm good. All I have to do is balance my oxygens. So I'm gonna look at my carbon dioxide. How many oxygens do I have from carbon dioxide, Victoria? Six. Nope. Oh, sorry, 12. 12. My bad. How many from the water? Six. Six. So I have a total of how many oxygens? 18. What number goes in front of the O2? Uh, nine. Nope. Say it again. Nine. No. Oh, yeah. I can't do basic math. I'm sorry. I was an English major. So, <laughs> so was I. <laughs> Sometime we'll talk of the merits of the, the worthlessness of King Lear. <laughs> I did two years of Shakespeare. I'm uh, good. I did. I did my time. Hey, all you got to do is read the storm, read the storm scene once and you're done for life. And you're done. Yep. Okay. That being as it may, I've, I've got my oxygens balanced, everything else. Now, guys, what you got to see when we are doing this. Okay. Is the left side of this equation ever going to be odd for oxygens? Is it ever, the left side, is it ever going to be odd? No. No, no because you're multiplying it by the oxygen subscript. So the left side's always going to be even. All right, what about the CO2? What about the contribution of oxygen from CO2? Is that ever gonna be odd? No. Again, I'm multiplying by two. So it's always gonna be even. Now, what about the water? If the coefficient in front of water is odd, is it ever going to equal the left side? Can it ever equal the left side? Left no. side's even. The right side, I have an even number from the CO2. To that, I'm adding an odd number from the H2O. So to fix that, if the number is odd in front of the H2O, I double it, which makes it even. I can then balance the oxygens. Does that make sense to you? If you didn't want that explanation, that's fine. You didn't have to have that explanation, but I thought you might like to know the logic behind some of the rules. Okay, we have, I'm not even sure this thing exists. C10H24. Jennifer. Yes. Balance the C's first. Okay. What number goes in front of CO2? Uh, 10, because I'm 10 times 1. 
Okay? So I'm going to put a 10 here. All right, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Now, what number goes in front of the H2O? Because we're balancing the ages, right? Okay. 24. Oh, 12. 12. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, person in the background. Who's who's saying it was in the background? Who oh. said 12 before Jennifer? Marie. Marie, good for you, Marie. Now you get to take over from Jennifer. Jennifer, thank Marie. <laughs> okay. Okay, Marie. Yes. Now, is the number in front of water even or odd? Uh, even. Uh, <laughs> is 12 an even or an odd number? Thank you, Omar. Well, come on, try to give me an answer. Even or odd? Uh, I, I, I think it's even. It's even, yes. <laughs> come on, anything divisible by two is even, all right? Yes. All right, so if it's even, then all we have to do is balance the O's. What's my contribution from the CO2. How many O's do I have from CO2? How many O's for CO2? Yes. It's which CO2. CO2 already has 10 in front of it. No, no. Now. I want to know how many oxygen CO2 has in it. How many oxygen atoms are 10 CO2s? Oh, 20. 20. All right, how many for the H2O? <coughs> H2O, it's 24. 24? No, uh, yes, yes, you're right, sorry. That was my bad. <laughs> okay. So I have a total on the left side of 44 oxygens. What number goes in front of O2? <coughs> oh, for the oxygen, for the H2O, well, it shouldn't it just be 12? Because 24 would be the hydrogen. OK. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. So this is now not 44, but this is 32. Thank you for catching that. Marie, did you understand? There's only yeah. a subscript of one for the oxygen. So the contribution of oxygen from the H2Os are 12. So this yeah. gives me 32 oxygen. Oh. What number what goes in front of O2? 32. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. We are about. Okay, okay, Marie, go away go for away. a while because you're a mech Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do the hard one. Those are the easy ones. All right, now, Apple Grace. Apple Grace. Going once. Hello. Twice. Thank you, Apple I'm Grace. Here. Okay, we're gonna balance this equation. Okay. What number goes in front of the CO2? Six. Very good. Nope, not in front of there. Okay. What number goes in front of water? Three. Uh-oh. We have an odd number. When we have an odd number, what does it tell us to do, Apple Grace? Step four here. Double it. Double it. So if I have a three, I've got to go ahead and double it immediately. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebalance the hydrogens. I got six times two, I got 12 hydrogens on the right. What number goes in front of C6H6? Two. All right, now I fussed with the carbons. I now have two times six or 12 on the left. What number goes in front of CO2 now?
Okay, Apple Grace. I have a I coefficient have of two times a subscript of six. I have 12 I have carbons two. on the left. What do I have to turn this six into? Two still six. No. Nope. No. Because 12 carbons do not equal six carbons. I need to have an equal number of carbons on both sides. Twelve. Twelve. Yep. Absolutely. Now, I've balanced the hydrogens. I've rebalanced the carbons. Now I got to balance the O's. I have twelve times two, twenty-four O's from my carbon dioxide plus how many O's from my water? Six. Thank you. So I've got a total of how many oxygens on the right? 30. What is the number that goes in front of the O2? 15. No, th not 3,015, 15. All right. Do we need more help with this? No. Does it seem to make sense to everybody? Does anybody want another example? Oh, can I have another example? Can we do one more? Okay, absolutely. Do you know the, this can be a little bit like left field but do you know like the hindenburg like what that equation would look like for the combustion yeah very oh <laughs> i I'm sorry, honestly I had, to, I had to think there for a second there you go that's it that's it Wow. Okay. You just made, made a whole bunch of water real quick. <laughs> that's why thought, they don't. That's why they don't fill those balloons with hydrogen anymore. Right. I thought that like there would be carbon somewhere in that equation, or nope. The, oh. the balloons are just filled with hydrogen. Uh, Can I get a visual, sir? <laughs> you just did. Go find it. Went away. It burned down apparently. Oh, the tragedy. What was that guy? Oh, the humanity. That was the quote. Okay. Somebody give me a number for carbon. Five. All right. Everybody, we can blame Terry for this one. Armethia. Armethia, you out there? Armethia. Yes. Hi. Hi. Okay, Armethia. Mm -hmm. How many carbons do we have on the left? Five. Okay, how many do we have on the right? One. So how do I make them even? What number goes in front of CO2? Uh, two. If I do that, I have five carbons on the left and two on the right. Oh, 10. If I do that, I have five carbons on the left, 10 on the right. Five. <laughs> Let's go with five, all right? Five's a nice number. All right? Amethia. Yeah. I have 14 hydrogens on the left, two on the right. What number mm -hmm. goes in front of water? Seven. Seven. Uh-oh, it's odd. So what do my rules tell me to do? Double it. If I double it, I have now changed my hydrogens. What number goes in front of C5H14? Um, Armethia, I have 14 times 14. two, I have 28. I have what times 14 equals 28? Two. Two. Okay. Now, I have two times five, 10 carbons on the left. What do I have to do with this five? Make it into 10. Make it into 10. 
Okay. Now I've got my carbons. I've got my hydrogens balanced. Now what I got to do is I got to figure out how many high oxygens I have. Mm -hmm. I have how many oxygens from CO2? We're multiplying the coefficient by the subscript. 20. 20. And how many do I have from oxygen from water? 14. 14. So I have a total of how many oxygens on the right? 34. So what number goes in front of my oxygen there? Um, There you, go. there you go. Absolutely. That is what we're doing here, right? Recognition of combustions. Hydrocarbon plus oxygen. The products you make, CO2 and water. The combustion reactions always go if they're ignited. If there's an energy source. Any other questions about combustions? Okay. Decomposition reactions. These are going to be fairly easy, guys. Recognition. You look at the reactants and you look at the products because you guys are not going to be able to predict all decomposition reactions. So you guys are going to look at the reactants and you're going to look at the products. If the products are less complicated than the reactants, it's a decomposition reaction. Reaction will involve a breaking up. It's what you're doing is you're taking a complicated molecule and you're making it into simpler ones. Okay? So I'm taking, I take a compound, AXO, I add heat to it. I change that into AX plus O2. I've taken a real complicated molecule, broken it down into two simpler ones. Now, if we are dealing with a chlorate or a chlorite, a ClO4 or a ClO3, the product is always going to be the chloride salt and oxygen. I have a, chlor a chlorate, I react that with heat, I make the chloride plus oxygen. This is gonna happen each and every time, guys. But what I want you to know, what I want you to recognize is the fact that this is a bigger molecule, these two molecules are smaller. I want you to be able to recognize decomposition reactions. That's all you really have to do for me for this. Professor, I have a quick question. Um, most of those reactions so far that you've shown for the decomposition, are they always gonna have heat added to them to break them apart? Is that another? Okay. You gotta have some sort of, you have to have some sort of energy source, Jennifer, because okay, yeah. a lot of these chemicals are safe to just leave on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Jennifer, do you have uh, so do you have baking soda in your refrigerator at this time? Not in my refrigerator, no. But Does your mom have baking soda in front in a refrigerator? Probably, yeah. All right. So it's shelf, it's safe there, right? Mm -hmm. But if you took that baking soda and you would heat it up, you would make sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. Okay. All right. It's okay. safe normally on shelf. However, mm -hmm. you put heat into the situation, then what's going to happen is you're going to make it unstable to the point where it breaks into smaller molecules. Does okay, that yeah, make sense? That was, yeah, because that was the pattern that I noticed. Okay, thank you. A uh, question. In that particular reaction, do you just add heat to the baking soda powder and then you just get water? No, no, no. What you're getting, if you're, if you're getting uh, baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. Right. Okay, Terry, what happens when you do add heat to that, you make sodium carbonate out of it, Na2CO3, plus water, 
plus CO2. Oh, okay. I, I see what you mean. If I just heated carbonate, I would make, uh, I would make uh, sodium oxide and I would make carbon dioxide. So if I take this compound, you see this guy? Right. I can, I can take this guy and add even more heat to it. And I would make Na2O plus CO2. That makes sense. Again, don't freak out about this. I'm not making you memorize what's happened here with these particular reactions. What I am making you understand is you got a bigger molecule, you get smaller molecules from it. It's a decomposition, okay? So if you take a bigger molecule and you make smaller ones and that's a decomposition, if you take smaller molecules and put them together to make a big one, you have a synthesis. A synthesis is taking smaller molecules that are the react reactants, putting them together and making a bigger one. If I put A and B together and make AB, I've made a synthesis. I have made a bigger molecule. If I take my Hindenburg reaction, that is a synthesis because I'm taking hydrogen and oxygen, putting them together and making water. I could take magnesium. Guys, you're gonna, you're gonna see this experiment later in the semester. You're gonna take a strip of magnesium and they're gonna put it directly into a flame. It's gonna burn really bright, like a settling torch bright. And you're gonna see a little white powder at the very end. That is a synthesis because what you're doing is reacting magnesium plus oxygen to make magnesium oxide. Again, the only thing I want you to know from decomposition or from synthesis is just be able to recognize them. Okay, I'm gonna mention this. And the only reason I'm mentioning it is so that later on, you, nobody can accuse me of not having mentioned it, mentioned it. There is another reaction called oxidation reduction. In this reaction, one element loses electrons, that is called an oxidation. One element gains electrons, that is called a reduction. Sorry. When you have an oxidation reaction, one reaction will not occur without the other one. So if you have an oxidation, you also have to have a reduction. If you have a reduction, you have to have a oxidation. You can't have electrons just flying around without them attached to something. The way you remember these, you have two, two mnemonics. I don't care which one you use, I stole them both. Leo goes Gur. Loss of electrons is oxidation. Gur, gain of electrons is reduction. You don't like that? Use oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. This is the only thing I want you to know from this. I want you to be able to identify what an oxidation is by the fact that the substance loses electrons or a reduction by the fact it gains electrons. And you guys have done these already. You have done them already. If we react magnesium plus copper chloride, what really is happening, the magnesium metal Remember, we said magnesium, if it's more active than co a copper, will replace the copper in this single replacement reaction by becoming a cation. So the magnesium loses two electrons to become Mg plus two, the cation. Subsequent to this, the copper gained those two electrons to become neutral copper metal. 
Magnesium loses electrons. It is oxidized. Copper is gaining it. It is being reduced. Now, have I totally blitzed your mind? Did we all go like this a second ago? Is this all kind of making a little bit of sense? Curtis has got his hand cupped just like I do. You doing okay, Curtis, with this? All right. Yeah, it's making some sense. Can okay. We... Uh, professor? Yes, one second. I'm, what I'm doing right in a second is I'm going to the, I'm summing this all up, guys. Question, who had a question? Uh, I did. I don't, I don't, please don't say I did. Chase. Thank you, Chase. Is the exam going to be multiple choice or is it going to be word? I haven't quite decided. Oh, could you, you please make it, it multiple choice? It was probably going to be multiple choice. Yeah. I haven't quite decided yet. Kind of relying on multiple choice because on the homework, it asked me to type out the, uh, like the equations and there is no way I was, I'll was chase, rough. you got to, all right. Let me show you guys something. I'm going to stop share and we're going to share the uh, Okay, yep. Okay. Nope, that's not the one I want. Uh, stop share. Crap. That's the meeting thing. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get into Oh, that's what I need to do. So I'll be with you in a second. I'm, I had it, but not in the form I wanted it. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Does you all good, good to be relieved from my voice anyway. Okay. Hey, your voice is like a million bucks, man. <laughs> all right. All right. This is the course. Course content. Chase, this is because you asked the question, Chase. Okay, test two. Chemical reactions. Go down to extra homework. Reaction worksheet. I may have to stop. You're not seeing this, are you? Are you guys seeing this? Yeah, we see it. Yeah, we can, we can see yeah. it. All right. That is the normal homework that I have you guys do. It's much more effective than the Pearson, I have the first section here. Just the, you got the products, you have the reactants, balance them. Second one, predict the products and balance the following. Third one, balance them, write the full ionic equation and the net ionic equation. And this also comes with the answer sheets. So ladies and gentlemen, you want practice, that will give you a great practice for the exam. All right, Chase? Yes, thank you. Not happy, not happy, I can tell, but it is what it is. Okay, yeah, getting back to Getting back, I'm going to sit here and review this. All right, recognition. If you have an ionic and an ionic compound, we have a, what type of reaction? Ah. 
Come on, guys. Ionic. Double replacement. Double replacement. When you have a double replacement, you know it reacts if you've had a solid form. So you look at the solubility chart. If you have a new color or something like a gas forming. With a double replacement. Cation from the first from the first reactant mates up with the anion from the second reactant. Rea uh, cation from the second reactant mates up with the anion of the first. Single replacement. If you have a halogen, that is Cl2, I2, Br2, or F2, plus an ionic compound, that is a single replacement. It reacts when the halogen, the one that is the diatomic, the one with the subscript of two, when that halogen is more active than the anion, it will react. What happens? The halogen becomes the anion of the ionic compound. The anion converts to a new halogen again with the subscript two. Recognition, if you have a metal and an ionic, the type of reaction is going to be a single replacement. It reacts if the metal is more active than the cation in the ionic salt. Products, the metal becomes the cation of the salt, the cation becomes a neutral metal. Combustion, I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm sorry, acid base. If you have a compound that begins with an H and you have a compound that begins with an OH, have to have both. If you have those, it's an acid base reaction. I will accept a double replacement. Understand, you can have a compound that begins with H reacting with an ionic compound. That is definitely a double replacement and not an acid base since you don't have the base. Same thing if you have an O compound with OH, but not the compound with H, again, it's a double replacement. In order to have an acid base reaction, you have to have one compound with an, beginning with an H, the second compound ending with OH. They always react. The products of an acid base are water and the salt of what is left. Combustion. Combustion reactions have a carbon hydrogen compound plus oxygen. If you ignite it, it will react. It will continue spontaneously. The products are CO2 and water. Decomposition, something bigger goes to something smaller. It reacts when it's initiated. Products are going to be variable. I'm not going to make you, I'm not going to make you predict the products here. Uh, chlorates with react with chlorates and perchlorates react with heat to make a salt and uh, oxygen. Again, I'm not going to make you recognize those. I'm, I'm excuse me. I'm not going to make you memorize those. Recognition of synthesis when you have smaller things being put together to make bigger things. If you have two iron atoms reacting with three sulfurs to make F2, S3, you've taken smaller things and made a bigger thing out of them. Does this little synopsis help you out, guys? Yes. Yes. Okay, I will, I will replace. I'm going to replace your PowerPoint with this because... This la these last eight or nine slides is the gist of what I've been talking about. 
Anybody have any questions about reactions? I'm going to expect you to recognize the type of reaction. I'm going to expect you to be able to tell me whether or not the reaction goes. I'm going to, in certain instances, I'll be asking you to predict the products. I'll be asking you to balance the reactions. And I'll be asking you to give me ionic and net ionic reactions. That's the whole thing we're doing. That's everything I've talked about the last two and a half days. Any questions before we go on? I'm hearing crickets. I like hearing crickets because that means that I've done a fantastic job. I just don't know why they don't just use like a uniform system when it comes to the moles and the G's, which we're about to get to. Why don't they just keep it one thing? Uh, because I'll tell you exactly why, Hunter. It kind of drives me nuts with all this. We just need to. Okay. You see you know, the screen? Are, are, are you seeing the screen now, Hunter? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Why? Perfect example if I can get this thing to work. Okay, if I can get this silly thing to work. You have to ask, Hunter. There we go. All right, Hunter. Do you know off the top of your head, do you have a periodic table in front of you? I sure do. What does hydrogen weigh? 1.008. Okay. So what does oxygen weigh? 15.999. Okay. So if I'm dealing with H2 and O2, um, comparing 2 and 32, would you agree with me, Hunter? Say that one more time. If I'm dealing with hydrogen and oxygen, when it, because it's H2 and O2, I'm dealing with a molecular weight of two and a molecular weight of 32, correct? Okay. Do they weigh the same? No. All right, Hunter, you have a, you have, a, um, oh, who, the, who am I gonna? You have Sue, so, so, the guy SUH, the defense lineman for the Bucks. Okay. He's on one end of a tightrope and you're on the other. If I yell start and he and these both start pulling, what's going to happen? I'm going to win. Yeah. No, he's going to pull me in the, that direction. Okay, so I can't compare. I can't compare hydrogen grams with oxygen grams. I can't do that because they each weigh different amounts. Yeah. So that's why we have to go through moles. Not actually was an important lesson for all of you. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, we're gonna deal with molecular weights first. And the first, the topic we're gonna to deal with is determining molecular mass. Now, scientists actually finally did figure out what protons and neutrons actually weigh. And it's this number right here. Now, is that practical? Is it practical for us to find a balance that weighs all the way out to here? No. 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 So what we, had, what we decided to do as chemists was we decided to make a standard, okay? We decided to compare all the other elements to one element so that we could relate every element to this one, and therefore for relating them all to this one, then they're actually interrelated to each other. Does that kind of make sense, guys? Sure. Yeah. 
What yes. we decided to do is we decided to use carbon 12. All right. Carbon 12 has six protons, six electrons. So if we just decide to say, since protons and neutrons weigh about the same, if we decide to say, okay, we're going to relate everything to carbon 12, and we're just going to say, okay, all protons weigh one, all neutrons weigh one. Therefore, if we have a carbon 12, we have six protons and six neutrons. So carbon 12 weighs 12. And we are going to relate every other atom to carbon 12. Again, we're not counting electrons because they weigh so much less than the protons, they're insignificant. Again, to reiterate what something I said back before test one, if we look at a periodic table, we're gonna find that the numbers aren't defined by the number of protons or neutrons. They're not whole numbers. This is because elements can have different numbers of neutrons. They only have to have the same number of protons. So the atomic weights are based upon the average abundance of each isotope. All right, that's where our basis is. Now, when we're calculating molecular weights, we are going to, our strategy here, we're gonna look at the chemical formula. We're gonna multiply the subscript by the atomic weight of that element. And we're gonna add up all the contributions of all the elements. Sometimes it's gonna be easy. Like if you add up the uh, uh, sodium chloride, we only have one sodium, only one chloride. So the sodium weighs 23, the, uh, actually 29.99, the chloride weighs 35.45. We add those together and we get 58.44. So when we have a simple one, it's not that much of a problem. If we have a more complicated one, then we may want to make a chart. I like making a chart because it seems to make the most sense. And the chart is gonna be element, number, atomic weight, Contribution. So if I have something like iron three SO four, take in. Let's do something even more sensible. I love it. Don't you love it when I ad lib, guys? I mean, I couldn't imagine this class without it. Mm. Okay. Now, this is my compound. This is my chart. So I'm going to first define all the elements. I have iron, I have sulfur, and I have oxygen. Okay, so how many irons do I have, Terry? Um, you have two. Two? Oh, wait, wait, you have one, you have one. No, I have two, it's FT2. Uh, that's a subscript. Oh, that, that's a subscript. Okay, never mind. That is a subscript. Yeah. See, it says so right there. Okay. 
How many sulfurs do I have, Terry? You have three. And how many oxygens? 12. Okay. Now, I'm going to figure out my atomic weights. I'm going to look them up. Iron is 55.85. Sulfur. By the way, if I'm wrong, somebody yell out. 32.06. And oxygen is 16. Now, in order to get the contribution from iron, I'm going to have to number, multiply the number of irons I have by the atomic weight. And I do that. And I get 111.70. I take the number of sulfurs, multiply that by, no, 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 no. Okay, and uh, this is gonna be 198, I believe. 192, I was close. So I've multiplied the number of atoms in the molecule by the atomic weights. And I get the contribution. The next thing I have to do is add up all the contributions. Nope, stop that. So I got 192 plus 96.18 plus 111.70. I add them all up and lo and behold, no, stop it. Lo and behold, I get a total weight of 399.88. Is this good? Do you kind of understand what we're doing here? If you've yeah. got a simple if you've got a simple molecule like um, magnesium oxide, you don't need to go through all this all this rigmarole. All you got to do is add up one magnesium atomic weight and one oxygen. But if you've got something a little more complicated, this is a nice organized thing that I do to try and keep myself straight. Now, do different periodic charts give you different atomic weights? Um, yeah, because some of them round. Yeah, because my, I forgot what it was. Uh, the sulfur was like 32.07, so just off by the hundreds. Okay, which one do you use? Which one do you use? The one that's more precise. <laughs> That's You're very gonna helpful. Love this. You're going to love this rule. Use atomic weights that won't lose significant figures on you. Data numbers rule. Okay? So... By data numbers, I mean the numbers that are given to you in the problem. If I had a question that said, how many moles are How many moles are that number of grams of iron three sulfate? The way you get moles is you multiply by one mole over the molecular weight. We're gonna get into that a little later. 
but if we multiply it by one mole over 399.88, how many sig figs is 399.88? Five. How many sig figs is 34.5975973? Six. Six. So if we used these atomic weights, we are getting rid of one of our significant figures here, correct? Yes. You never want to do that. Data is precious. You always want to use atomic weights that are more precise than your data requires. Does that make sense to you? So then, Professor, should we have used 15.999 for oxygen instead of 16? If, if this were my question, Rosina, yes. OK. And I think it's three nines and a four, if I'm not mistaken. 15.9994, if I'm not mistaken. I okay. could be mistaken. That's what mine has. OK. If I have sodium carbonate, Christina, how many sodiums do I have? Uh, one. One? OK. So I'm going to multiply sodium's contribution as one times the atomic weight, or one times 22.99. How many carbons do I have, Christina? Uh, one. So I'm going to multiply one times the atomic weight of carbon, or 12.011, to give me 12.011. How many oxygens, Christina? Three. So I'm going to multiply that by the atomic weight of 16 to get 48. Then to get the entire atomic weight of sodium carbonate, I'm going to add sodium's contribution, carbon's contribution, and oxygen's contribution. Do I need, again, one more, one more example? Or are you guys done with this? Can we do one more? Good. Negative Curtis. visual. Curtis, good. Curtis? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to do something. Make a new slide. Uh, what is it? Sulfate? Yeah. Uh, we'll do the four, not 34. Uh, <sighs> there we go. Okay, Curtis. How many, how many aluminums do I have? Two. Two? So to get aluminum's contribution, I'm going to multiply that two times the atomic weight of aluminum, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Curtis, how many sulfurs do I have? Um, is it one? I'm sorry. Uh, what, what is that number? I can't see that last number. Uh, that is a three. This number here three, three is sulfurs. a three. Does that make it a little better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, is it three? Many, I, I've got three sulfurs. And Curtis, how many oxygens do I have? Uh, 12. 12. Absolutely perfect. So in order to get the molecular weight of aluminum sulfate, I'm going to take my two aluminums, multiply that by the atomic weight to get the contribution of aluminum. I'm going to take my three sulfurs, multiply those by the atomic weight of sulfur to get sulfur's contribution, and my 12 oxygens by 16 to get the oxygen. I'm going to add yeah, up no, no. all those contributions, and this gives me an atomic uh, molecular weight for aluminum sulfate of 342.14. Okay, I got it now. Thank you. Okay, I did that. Okay. 
an example of which, of which molecular weight to use. If you have 2.653 grams of carbon and you need moles of carbon, which atomic mass of carbon do you use? One second, let me see if I can grab somebody who's not paying attention. Alec, you out there, Alec? Yes, sir. All right, I, you've got 2.653 grams of carbon. You need moles of carbon. You have to use one of these atomic weights. Which one do you use? Um, would it be the 12.011? You can use that because I've got four significant figures. My atomic weight of 12.011 oh, is five. I miscounted, so. Oh, no, no, Alec, Alec, you can use, you can use something that's more precise. You just can't use something that's less precise because if you use 12.0 grams, you have now limited your data to three significant figures. Does that make sense, Alec? Yes, sir. Okay, what are we doing for time, guys? 621. What, 621? 31. 31. Okay, we can get started on moles. Maybe we can get started on moles. Um, I just want to apologize for being out part of the class. I was listening, but my older son locked my younger son in the bathroom and I didn't have a key, so I had to like take the doorknob off and stuff. But I was listening the whole time. <laughs> you did hey, that one. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I can see a future criminal. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you have to learn how to be a criminal to solve a crime. So that's what I'm learning in my crime scene tech class. I'm like, I have to learn how to be a criminal. That's kind of kind of productive please don't murder me victoria not today terry wait what today today not today though not today that's as comforting as a scream in the middle of the night yeah okay i got some screams in the middle of the night are pretty comforting that's it i'm done again this is another <laughs> reference i don't know why i said that can we get a visual? <laughs> oh, no. no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to find my mole PowerPoint. Okay, we'll at least get into this a little bit. Okay, I can get this done. The test is not going to be, by the way, that's a mole. The test is not going to be changed. It will be next Tuesday. I will be able to get this all done by that time. Are you going to do the same thing you did last time where it's going to fit within a certain amount of time length for us that are work until five and such like that? Uh, uh, come, to, come to me again. What, what, what did so I like, do? So you made it. What like, foolish thing did I do the last time? No, you made it. You made it seventy-five minutes and like a lesser amount of questions for us to get it at least done by seven for us who like work ah. till five and don't get home till like five five thirty. And it was all multiple choice. <laughs> Is that so, but like, I was wondering if that would be like the way. It was um, I'm gonna look at it. Okay. 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 Uh, so if you, you, you had... Did I lose something? Is, is there a that, it, Oh. It's actually a mole. That is a mole, yeah. Why is the face have... photoshopped or something? It's just that ugly. That's the only thing that my dog has ever caught. <laughs> Your okay. dog has caught a mole, what? Yeah. They move slow. So how big them. is a mole? The doke is about four and a half ounces. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to convert moles to grams to things. That is what we're doing. So guys, we have a pile of marbles that weighs 394.80 grams. 10 marbles weigh 37.60 grams. How many marbles are in the pile? Victoria. 
How can we solve this problem? I am not good with conversions, Professor. This is not the question for me. Spencer, be, uh, thank you. I'll, I'll give you up real early, Spencer. That's yeah. a hunter type of question. Spencer. Yes. You have 394.80 grams. If you know 10 marbles weigh 37.60 grams, how many, how many marbles are in your pile? I need a strategy on how to solve this problem. Um, would you uh, divide 37.6 into the 394.8? Not quite. Can't you but if you know, go ahead, come on. Can't you do the 10 divided by um, 37.6, which would give you the weight of one marble and then just divide no, that? No, the other way around. You, no, you, have the the right around. Mila, you have the right idea, but you need to get it around. You take okay. the total weight, divide it by 10. Oh, yeah. Won't that give you the weight of one marble? Yeah, and then you could put that into the, um, the bigger number, which would then break it down to one. So if we divide our 37.60 into 10 marbles, this, mean, this means each marble weighs 3.76 grams. We then divide the total weight by the 3.76 grams per marble. This gives us 805 marbles. Wait, I think that's wrong. I think I've lost my marbles here. No, the math is correct. <laughs> that's what I got. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist it. So, what weighs more, a pound of gold or a pound of feathers? They weigh the same thing. Both a pound. Are you depends, sure? Depends on how it much you have. a pound of gold and a pound, a pound of, pound of gold. So what weighs more, a pound. a pound of gold or a pound of feathers? They weigh the same. same. You willing to bet the next test on that, Hunter? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I say a pound of feathers. Ooh. She has no. the right answer. Wait. They're both a pound. It's the a surface pound. area. What's that, Jennifer? The surface area of the feathers is nope, more. Nope, 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 nope. That has to do with density. I'm talking oh, about okay. you, have, you have enough feathers to have a pound. Yes, the volume of the feathers is going to be more. You have a pound of gold and a pound of feathers. It's the Hunter, same you thing. still stand. Same thing. The mass is the same. Yeah. The mass is always, the same. Absolutely. The same. 100%. Who wants to? I will give you 100% on the next test if you were right. But if you were wrong, you get a zero. The goal. Wait a minute. Oh, man. My whole grade is going to bet on this. Um, I'll bet it because you know what? A pound uh, of gold and a pound of feathers. I'm trying to make you overthink. They're both the same. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, they're both the same. The goal. Trying to get in your head. Gold is weighed in troy ounces. There are 12 ounces to a pound. Feathers are weighed in a voidopoil, which is 16 oh ounces God. to a pound. What? So what? I remember this. Wait a minute. Therefore, a pound of feathers weighs more than a pound of gold. I knew it. Give me my hundred, man. I'll tell you, you have a zero. That's not specified in the <laughs> problem, though. What? Yeah, that's not. That's a trick. <laughs> of of course, you? it's a trick, guys. When I tell you not to do something, don't do it. What is a vortipoi? I've never heard that. My it's a different life. sketch. It's a different type of way. See, that's why we just need to all have one, one scale. He never oh. said it was going to be fair. He uh. just said, "Here's a bet. Take it or leave it." At least I got the answer right first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, know. I got that. All right. The real question we have. What has more molecules, a pound of gold or a pound of lead? And yes, they're both weighed by troy ounces. And both weigh the same. Then what weighs, what has more molecules, a pound of gold or a pound of lead? Pound of gold. This one would, no, this one would be different because this, we would have to look at the amount of uh, molecules in each one because like they can have the same weight on the same scales but they can be comprised of, of a different amount of molecules that happen to weigh different portions. It's the gold. <laughs> Wrong, Armethia. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Armethia is right. I, I just flipped myself out for a second. Yes, there are more molecules in a pound of gold 
than a pound of lead. Look at your periodic tables. If you look at your periodic table, the atomic weight of lead is 207. The atomic weight of gold is 196.97. So pound for pound, gold will have more molecules in it because its atomic weight is less. Gold has this mass. Lead has that mass. Gold is 197, lead is 207. So molecule to molecule, a molecule of lead weighs more than a molecule of gold. So just like we did with the marbles, when we divided the total weight of the marbles by the weight of each individual marble, because lead weighs more, we're dividing by a bigger number. If we're dividing by a bigger number, ultimately our number is going to be smaller. Does that make sense to you guys? We yeah. can't compare. This is something similar to what I was trying to show Hunter earlier. We can't compare weights to weights because you can't. So in order to compare one element to another, we needed to compare it to a standard. What is the standard, ladies and gentlemen? What did I say earlier the standard was? Moles. No. Nope. Carbon, Carbon 12. 12. All the elements are compared back to carbon 12. So if I divide the 197 by 12, gold weighs about 16 and a half times as much as carbon does per atom. All right, so if we do the real numbers and we sit and do the real numbers, carbon 12 has six protons that weigh that much and they have six neutrons that weigh this much. The total weight when I multiply these numbers out is 1.994 times 10 to the minus 23rd grams per each carbon atom. That's what it actually weighs in terms of what a gram is. Now, if we say carbon weighs 12 grams and an atom weighs that much, how many atoms are in the pile? We are doing the same calculation we did with the marbles. We have a total weight, which is the 12 grams, and we have what each carbon atom weighs per atom. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 12.01 grams, multiply it by one atom over 1.994 times 10 to the 24th grams. This gives us a number. So if I am dealing with 12.01 grams of carbon, this equals this number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. 6, comma, 0, 2, 2, comma, 20 zeros following. Excuse me, Professor, where did we get the 1.994? Okay. We have six protons. Each proton weighs this much. Rosina. And where did we get that number from? Uh, I gave it to you. Okay. I gave it to you uh, earlier today. But it's not like we can pull it up on a periodic table or something yes, you like can. that. You could, because... you could actually, if you if you Google what a proton weighs, you'll find that it's this number. Okay. Or somewhat close. So are we are we agreeing that 12 grams of carbon? We have said that 12 grams of carbon is going to be our standard. So if each atom weighs this amount. We're agreed that in 12 grams of carbon, there are that many atoms. Do I have any argument there? Any argument? No. Okay. 
Kaylin. Come on out, Kaylin. Come on Will out. Will you we skip me? Play. I've got to change my laundry over. This is very bad timing. <laughs> Rosina. <laughs> Thank you. Rosina. Ah, uh, yes, sir. You own a pack. Uh, you own a paper factory, and and St. Petersburg College orders nine billion sheets of paper. Rosina, are you going to count each and every one of those nine nine billion sheets of paper? If there were bills, I would, but not otherwise. Even if they're bills, <laughs> even at that point, it's not going to be worth your while, is it? Yeah. Are you going to count each sheet? No. You're going to measure the sheets. How sheet measured? How is paper reams. measured? Reams. By the reams of the packet. 500 sheets to a ream. Yeah. If we want to extend this, a carton generally has 10 reams in it. Yeah. A pallet will have 100 cartons and a semi will hold 60 pallets. Got it. So if I multiply each one of these things by each other, my truck will, her, will hold 3 comma 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 sheets of paper. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a more workable number? Yes. I can now take those, what was it, 7 billion, and just count the number of trucks, and I'll know how many pieces of paper are delivered. Right. We're dealing with counting numbers. You deal with counting numbers all the time. Armethia, how do you buy eggs? In a dozen, 12. You don't buy 12? You don't go and get 12? You buy one dozen, right? Yes. If you're going to make a breakfast for a Boy Scout troop, you're going to go out and buy probably about five or six dozen of eggs, right? Yeah. You're not going to sit there and count each egg. You're going to use your counting number, right? Yes. So... Chemists do the same thing, and we've been doing it for years. We're lazy. If we're dealing with chemical reactions, we don't want to count each and every atom that we're having in that chemical reaction. We're going to use a number that represents a larger number. That is what a counting unit in is. In this case, if we have 500 golden retrievers, we have a ream of golden retrievers. If I have a dozen cookies, I have 12 of them. The same concept applies to chemistry, only we're going to use the term mole. We just, I just made it up. Boom. I just made up a mole. And I'm telling you that just like a dozen is 12, a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of anything. A mole equals that big number, or you want to do a scientific notation, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So if I have a mole of atoms, I have that many atoms. If I have that many molecules, I have that many molecules. If I have a mole's worth of pork chops, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pork chops. It's a counting number, okay? I just want to get that, get that imparted to you. We're going to deal with the conversions on, on Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, okay? I, th I take it we're about at a quarter of. Uh, you're over. Sorry. You're over. That's okay. Okay. I just want you to get right now that a mole is a counting number. It's worth 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's what I want to get across to you today. All right. Yes. Yes. Quiz. What is it? 10. I do believe quiz 10 is due on Thursday. It is still due on Thursday. The test is still due on Monday. Any questions about what we've been through tonight? No. Nope. Nothing about Pokemon or Squirtles? 
No, I think I'm good on that front. What's the mole of a squirtle, Professor? 6.022 <laughs> times 10 to the 23rd. Look, I was just <laughs> testing you, all right? <laughs> okay, guys. Unless you have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and end this so I can start my uh, uh, my lab up in a half an hour or so. Have a nice night. Yeah. See you in luck. Care. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, professor, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I had to rejoin right there at the end very late in the class because no uh, halfway through the lecture, my computer crashed. Things happen. Is it Alec, don't worry about it, Alec. All right. I appreciate I it. You, you have a good night. You have a good night. Bye, all. Toodaloo. Goodbye. Neela, you have a question? Omar, okay? Okay, I can see Kate, Omar, unless you answer me now, I'm going to mark you absent. Bye.